guys, we are back for another Dokkan Battle video. So, I did kind of like um, the top 10 worst design characters of 2022. I titled it like worst characters, but like it's just designed. Uh, this one is going to be the best design characters of 2022. Now, I would have done just summonable units, but I decided to actually just open it up to everything. And the reason is because of AGL LR Gohan. Now, AGL LR Gohan is a 2023 unit, actually, so he's not eligible for this list. But next year, uh, I probably as of right now, Gohan for sure would hit that list. His design is beautiful. I think they did a really uh, good job with it. So because of that, I was like, okay, we'll, we'll include uh, free-to-play characters and other characters and stuff like that. Um, now, I want to be very clear here. You guys probably, if you're here, you know my preferred play style, right? Uh, I'm taking... Vegeta and Trunks uh, 25 times out of 25 over Cooler, right? These two directly next to each other. Uh, I feel like the overwhelming defensive ability and capable offense is far superior to overwhelming offense and capable defense, which is what Cooler is, right? Um, I, I, just, I just feel like this is just a much more consistent, much more tight, much more effective play style um, using this character. But this is best design, not... Strongest character, not the easiest character to win with. So, if you're thinking coming in that the top five is just going to be uh, guard plus stacking character, damage reduction plus stacking character, uh, damage reduction character, like I'm not, I'm not doing that, right? I'm not going to. We're not super boring here, um, which is like guard character, guard character, stacking character, damage reduction character, dodge character, right? As like our top units. Um, I tried to do best design. Now, at the end of the list, it's a little rough. We'll, we'll just jump into it. I wanted to specifically talk about this guy. This guy is not on the list, but I felt like I should talk about him beforehand anyway. Uh, the main reason I don't have him on here, I love what he's doing. Defensive stacking, guard, revive is fantastic, but uh, the thing is, is that you can't really rock him as a leader super effectively because when w once you fall below 59% HP and then you revive... The other one is just a, a sitting duck, worthless almost, right? Th this unit gets crushed if he's not guarding. Um, and uh, to me, that's just enough to, dr to drop him out, right? Like that that kills it. There's even characters like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Vegeta and Trunks later on. But like there's there's little like, like things in their kit where just because there's some supremely powerful unit doesn't mean I think that their design is, is the best or the greatest. Or maybe it's just a little too... Uh, like cookie cutter, but I, I think that this, the fact, the fact you can't running double of this Goku is a very annoying to me. That's enough to just like, I, I, I wouldn't even put him on there actually. Um, now <laughs> at number 10, I actually chose this Piccolo right here. I'm sure a lot of people would disagree. I forgot to put this Piccolo in here. All right. Piccolo at number 10. Now, again, this is a very subjective list that I'm doing here, right? Uh, Piccolo is not, you know, one of the top five units in the game, one of the top ten units in the game, some incredible character, even probably a notable character to a lot of people. But I think they said in a live stream, I mean, some of the things they say are uh, <laughs> not always the truth, right? Like, um, you know, anniversary units not being headliners before, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we got the jokes, the memes. Um, but they did say they wanted to create characters that can be good in various types of content. I like what they did with this Piccolo, more so for a world tournament, but I feel like in, in a lot of stages um, with potentially where AoE might be required or nuking, I, I like what they did with this guy. Um, giving him the guaranteed crit on his first super, uh, this guy, like... You could easily make a case that this guy is the best world tournament unit or right up there, right? Like, he's nuking. He does guaranteed crits. Like, if he supers, you sweep the field. I like this. I, I feel like they gave this guy a great easy A. I think his stun is good. I don't know that I could sit here and blabber on about him all day long, but I, I, I really like what they do with this Piccolo. Um, again, this is not strongest characters, and some characters, while they're very good, um, I, I feel like their design might be a bit boring, right? I, I think a perfect example of that is, like, easy SDR cooler, right? They basically just gave him defensive stacking. And you guys know, you could pull up 80 clips of me saying this. 
it's very effective. It's very good. You could just give him defensive stacking, but it is very boring, right? It's or, or or lazy or just like yeah, we'll just you know when in doubt defensive stacking, right? Like that's kind of what they did with Cooler. Um, they gave him additionals you can't really take advantage of in the hardest stages, right? I'm not gonna sit there and say that's the best design. We're one of the best design characters. Now I did say that I didn't want to do like a ton of like just like oh guard damage reduction blah 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 type of these characters but I do feel like god Goku's another character I really do need to highlight right here he does have kind of a problematic ability with this though um really dropping a character like this who is this good against uh, some of these types of enemies uh, could lead to I think toxic boss design by the devs right which is sort of what happened with um Red Zone Broly um, I think Red Zone Broly's design as a boss is very toxic with the AoE and the dodge canceling and stuff like that. And the reason he's designed in such a way is because you have two characters, this guy who just tanks, and then Tech Khalifa who could dodge anything he does. You have two characters who could lock him down, right? So so this certainly is kind of an issue, but I, I, between his ceiling, the rainbow orb changing, and the damage reduction, and the great link set... It's just, it's just so easy to just slide this guy on any team. As long as you're fighting one of these enemies right here, this guy is a dream to run. He just, not only can he tank really well, but again, he's got the link set. He's got the orb changing. It's just, it's just fantastic, right? It's not only that he's tanking, but he's actively setting up the rest of the rotation. Um, I, I get that. That's, that's pretty much it. I guess maybe some people might consider this next one boring as well. I, I feel like this character being on this list is going to be controversial at all. Actually, this is the type of character where it's like once, uh, if you have an annoying requirement or something like that, like this Goku and Vegeta, there's no way in hell they're sniffing this list ever, ever ultimate Gohan. You're drunk. You're coping. You're lying. If you're going to put ultimate Gohan on here with how bad his key issues are, there's no way now Vegeta and Trunks. The main issue that a lot of people are going to point to, right, is this. So, they guard as the first attacker in the turn. I don't know if people just don't really use this unit and they talk about them or what, but they do guard for the first five turns in any slot. Um, a lot of the difficult content over the last several months has not been super marathon long fights. Things like even Tech Cell Max these days, um, Metal Cooler Core, a lot of the Wicked Bloodline Red Zone, even the, the Cell Max Red Zone, the Gamma Red Zone, all of these fights, I mean, turn 5, 6, 7, 8, like you're probably going to max out right there. So this notion that this unit is just anchored to slot 1 is just not even true. It's not, right? Because... Maybe if the bond of parent and child category was a little bit more ineffective, but it has every Goku, every Gohan, and nearly every Trunks and Vegeta on it. So it's like this character, that's not really as much of a flaw as people point it out to be. Now, I will say this, this is designed around, like, you know, I think the best designs of 2022. I do think potentially the way the upcoming anniversary units look I think events might be stretched out even longer, which then would anchor this unit a little bit more to slot. I mean, if you're getting to, like, turn 15 or something like that, then, yeah, most of the fight, they would have to be in slot one. But as of right now, with a lot of the, you know, recent difficulty content over the last several months, it's not like we're just sitting on turn 20 all the time, right? Like, it's not how it goes. Um, And it's like, besides that, I like what we got here, right? They have the buildup, um, but this, I think, is big here. So it's stacking, but it's not just, you know, defensive stacking, but you have attack stacking as here, uh, here as well. I don't like attack stacking too much on characters until we start talking about characters that are then doing this. This, uh, their active skill is just ludicrous. This buff right here is so impactful. This defensive buff, I adore characters that give themselves guaranteed crits is just so powerful. I think this unit is very good. You have the solid link set, right? The very common Super Saiyan, Saiyan Warrior Race, Prepare for Battle, Fierce Battle, Legendary Power. This character is sharing four and five links with many of the top Saiyan characters in the game. It's th This is a unit 
their design is certainly, I don't think, as tight as characters above them in this list. And more so, like, how good this character is is just potentially, like, a, a factor of, like, this number, like, that number, this number, and then they stack. But I, I like the design here. I think this is super, 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 super busted while being a little bit balanced. But um, just pretending like they only ever have to be in slot one or they suck is actually not true in a lot of the recent difficult content, right? If the Metal Cooler core was like a 20-phase fight and Tech Cell Max was typically going, you know, 10-plus turns, stuff like that, I probably wouldn't rate this character as high. But uh, it's not like a lot of these recent fights have been you know, incredibly long, you know, I, I use Dokkan Fest Tech Bardock quite a lot, I feel like I typically will only have, like, one turn at the end where he doesn't have a scouter up, right, which is five turns, just like Vegeta and Trunks, so that's something to keep in mind right there, uh, next, I'm gonna put, um, Orange Piccolo, Power Awakening Piccolo right here, uh, I just like a lot of the stuff he is doing, right, one really nice thing they gave this guy that's, I think, really helpful is this, Putting this, so he supports the rotation, giving key to allies um, on a character that needs to get hit to build up. He has the guard for the first couple of turns, which many characters this year have. LR Goku Black and Zamasu, Fasha, LR Goku and Piccolo, this guy Ultimate Gohan. Um, Gamma 1 has that, right? This, this guard for the first couple of turns ability. I do like this quite a bit. Um, guarding for the first couple of turns can really help you get over opening round RNG, which I think is very, very helpful. So I love when characters are doing that. Um, this guy's also got the heal in here as well. Um, he's got attack debuffing. He's got stunning. He's he's very, very strong defensively. He could put up some good damage. Again, he's got the support. He has damage reduction. This guy just has a lot of little loose ends in his kit that are just very helpful and very conducive to him being a really powerful character and then his <laughs> his active skill so good it's a pretty painless condition all things considered how strong that the top like portion of superheroes as a category is um and then this this giant form i mean you transform into him and he just belts out 30 attacks and kills anything um <clears throat> i like it quite a bit um they gave him the additional key <clears throat> per key sphere as well um, he has built-in additionals. Piccolo, uh, I think that he's actually uh, bringing a lot to the table. I like, I like basically his design. Um, I think they did a really good job with him. All right, next, I'm gonna bring in Final Form Cooler. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm sure this might surprise some people that I have him above like Vegeta and Trunks and Piccolo and stuff like that. But I, I, I feel like if you look at this, where is the flaw in his design? I don't. I don't see it, right? Like, he has attack stacking. I don't really like attack stacking. I think attack stacking is, is pretty overrated. Um, <clears throat> Unless what? Quick answer. What, when does attack stacking get good? Oh, yeah. When you've got one of these. Hell yeah, dude. If you have an active skill attack and you stack attack, that begins to get very powerful. Cooler, Pan, Vegeta and Chunk, 7th Anniversary LRs. Um, cooler... I think a mark of good design for characters is very consistent key. Carnival Goku, Vegeta and Trunks, this cooler, all never, ever struggle for key. Cooler, you start the turn on good setups, diff, like red zone setups, cell max red, red like setups, and you start, start the turn with like 20 key with this guy. That's good. That's good design, right? Um... He's just incredible. Um, now, certainly, I favor defensive characters more, without a doubt. But I, th this guy doesn't really have flaws in his kit. I, I, like, I don't. It's just like, like better offensive characters will come out, and it's like they're gonna have more right here, right? Or, or like this three turns would jump up to like seven turns or something like that. Like, it, it, it's I, I, I really like outside of maybe giving him a little defense right here. Now, I'm not saying stack. De if he stack defense, he be the best unit in the game, I don't know, probably, right, like, uh, but, like, just giving him maybe, like, 30% defense for one turn right here, uh, that's, like, the only thing, I, this is the type of character that, like, nothing is more fun than him doing, like, four supers and killing anything, right, like, it, it's really good, uh, he's got the good link set, again, I, I highly value an LR that sits at, like, 20 key at the start of turn, um, just an impeccable design, really, I, yeah, I, I can't, 
I, I can't really point something out to him where it's like, oh, this is bad. Whereas it's like, at least, you know, Piccolo, I think, could maybe struggle for key a little bit, right? Vegeta and Trunks, you know, you certainly could talk about being first slot past turn five, right? Whereas Kula doesn't really have that type of stuff. Um, next, I'm going to bring up Ginyu here. Um, now, I don't have Ginyu's banner units here. Again, I wanted to try and shy away from just, oh, they're guarding. They're so good. We have them up here, right? Uh, but I like what Ginyu's bringing to the table. He's just bringing so much, right? Defensive stacking. Um, he has the support type buff for his, you know, his team. He's super effective against all types as well. He has the body change, right? Conditions aren't really too tough. Uh, 70% HP, fourth turn, and then when you transform, you get the the healing, then he begins to stack attack, and then I love his build up here, where he then gets, you know, uh, I think it's a multiplicative buff, he gets the crit chance, he gets the dodge, he potentially could have a scouter as well, Um, they just slammed, I think, a lot of strong abilities on this character, I, I, I like it a lot, Um, if you're going to point out a flaw for this guy, certainly you could say Lynx, um, actually, you know, I, I think I'm going to do a quick, um, switch up here. I'm actually going to, I'm going to put cooler in front of Ginyu. I, and I, I think Lynx is where I would do that. Right. Whereas, yeah, definitely. Cause like cool or Ginyu's team, you want to run a lot of Ginyu force characters, but like Ginyu sucks as a leader of terrifying conquerors and then cooler, uh, he doesn't suck as the leader of Terrifying Conquerors. He's the ideal leader, actually. So, and then considering how strong his Link set is compared to Ginyu's, who sucks at Terrifying Conquerors, I, I I could slide cooler above Ginyu right there, actually. Yeah, perfect. I'm totally cool with that. All right, next. Um, I have the these units tied again. Um, people typically do cry with this, but we're talking about their kits um, a little bit less. I actually favor the Super Saiyan Force kits over the gods. Um, so... The reason these units are up here, and I mean, certainly considering we're talking about their design, I feel like you guys would understand for sure why they're tied, right? Like, if you split these characters up on this list, uh, you know, I see your bias right there, because they're pretty much doing the same stuff, right? Um, let's, let's sort of go through it. So, they both stack attack and defense. Typically in the tougher fights, you know, you don't just get to stack until turn 80, if there's a lot of attacks aimed at them from turn three on, or if they get super attacked, you've probably lost, right? You do need to transform um, in order for both of them to really begin to tank against the really tough bosses. Now, you have the additionals, the ease at which they get key, right? Super effective against all types, built, again, built-in additionals, all this stuff. Easy transformation on turn four, right? Uh, in base, they essentially are the same right? All doing the same stuff. And then you transform with them. And this is where I probably would favor Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta a little bit. It, it is close though. It, it really is. Cause it's like one thing you can point out here, Gogeta does not have a guaranteed additional. He just has a high chance to additional. Whereas the gods provided you get 20 key, their additional is guaranteed, right? But then Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, he's getting this damage reduction, per key sphere obtained. Now, the gods are getting dodged, sure. Down the line... Wait, where is it? It's right here. Down the line, uh, the gods' ability will certainly age better than Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta's. Right now, in my experience, both of these characters can tank normals after they, like, double super, you know, transformed for pretty much any boss in the game, right? Down the line their defense isn't going to be enough, and then the gods just outright dodging will be probably superior to Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. But right now, I think Gogeta's damage reduction plus his super attack counter is actually better than the gods, what the gods are, are putting up on the table as of right now, right? Um, they both also have the attack break. Um, I think they both have uh, cr like critically powerful um, active skills as well. I like the condition. Either you're under 50% HP or the enemy's under 50% HP. The guaranteed crits on the turn. They have the attack stacking lead to it. They have the ridiculously busted two key per type key sphere right here, right? I mean, top to bottom, these characters have fantastic designs. These are the characters that introduce 200% leader skills. They're both on a million different teams. Um, just massive Ws. I, I think the designs... For both of these guys are incredible um that's it it's just it's just their designs are are insanely good 
Um, so we have them very high uh, ranked up right there. All right, now the next three uh, is probably going to be surprising for some people, for sure. Um, but, like, I am very, very, very comfortable with this. So Yajirobe, right? Um, Yajirobe would be one, but it, it is... It, it does get a little bit scary, right? So Yadrobi is not really that tanky. Um, and you have to run him in slot three. I don't really consider that that big of a deal, but you have to do run him in slot three. Now, the way Yadrobi's design works is he gets crushed by the first attack. Typically, it's doing damage, even if it's just a normal attack from the big bosses. The first hit he takes does damage. Then after that, he gets a 70% chance to dodge. And no matter what kind of damage that first hit does, you will live because he survives a KO attack. But then from that point on, if he gets hit again, if he takes even one point of damage, you will lose. So that's why he then needs to have the 70% chance to dodge. And then if you do dodge the rest of the attacks, then he'll recover a little bit of HP at the end of the turn, which is good. I do like that. I think it's it's a strong... It, it, it's They kind of balanced... Around the fact that, like, you know, Cell Max could super this guy for 2 million, and then you could live, right? They wanted to balance it a little bit. I think they did a good job. But what becomes really interesting with this guy, and what's going to be very interesting how they're going to design characters next year, is when we get to this, right? So, already right here, Yadrobi just gives one key and 30% attack and defense on the rotation. But if Yadrobi's in slot 3... All allies get one key and 20% attack and defense for the next three turns. So Yadrobi shows up and he's buffing the team for multiple turns. I just imagine how insane it would be if like Final Form Cooler or Vegeta and Trunks or Power Awakening Piccolo had this, right? Like they're going to drop this on one of those type of characters and it's just going to be crazy. This is good design, right? And they're giving, he's got crits as a third attacker. Like, I, I like them, like, putting him in the third slot and then letting him do all this, I think, is really good. He's getting a huge defense here, ceiling here as well. I, I like that he has this Senzu. I think my idea for how they could do a good job with sort of increasing boss difficulty moving forward would be have bosses hit you with uh, nasty status effects, which we did see. Um, from the uh, collection of epic battles, where like Cell and Gohan in there will super you and stun you for nine turns. Remember, Red Zone Android 18 seals you for multiple turns. Um, and it's like, yeah, Jirobi, you could use this Senzu right here, and you would heal that, right? Typically, right now in the collection of epic battles, if Gohan supers one of your characters, they're essentially removed from the fight. They're stunned for nine turns. But then imagine uh, Goat Jirobi pops out Senzu, bam, no more. That stun is gone. So, uh, beautiful design for this guy. All right, next, Path to Power, uh, Goat Goku right here. Um, should I put him at one? Let me grab number one as well. Number one is Chi Lai. <laughs> Chi Lai, of course. I mean, you can't, you're not, no, we're, I'm not listening to bullshit. Uh, now, Kid Goku is ridiculous, right? Uh, I love what they're doing here. He's supporting weaker categories. He's rainbow orb changing, super busted ability. Um, he's getting crit and damage reduction per rainbow key sphere. Uh, this is why, again, a full dodge build for this character is ideal because he has so much crit and additional already built into his kit that you really can give him full dodge and he will still triple super, triple crit, and then dodge the 1.5 million damage super attack from the Metal Cooler core. I've done it numerous times. 10 plus times. My Goku is triple supering and then dodging super attacks. Right? It's His design is is impeccable, right? With, with all the stuff built in. And this is why it's far less of a big deal to spam your units with crits and additionals as people think these days because they're all getting this shit for free in their kit. It's not like the old days where you're critting only because you're putting crit in the potential system. So many characters have got built-in crits, built-in additional, built-in dodge, right? That it really becomes easy to really balance your characters out and have them perform, be able to perform anything. Um, critting, additional, and dodging. So that's really good. Um, and then Goku also has this. I, if you build teams the way I like to, which is very defensive, I like building teams 
where I don't typically have a weak link, right? Where some boss, oh, he supered the one character I didn't want him to super. GG, bitch, we're out of here. I hate that, right? So I like to build a team full of strong uh, defensive uh, options. And if you do that with this kid Goku and he's giving you the extra damage reduction, you just feel it. You run this character, you feel that damage reduction on the whole rotation. It's just so crazy. Now, there's no way I could possibly not put Chi at one. It's so obvious. It's I, I like how how could you even put another character above her in terms of best design? Anytime a character ever comes out, they've laughed about me having a Mickey Mouse checklist. Oh, do they guard? Do they stack? Do they support? Do they rainbow orb change? Do they have a scouter? Well, let's take a look at Chi shall we? Um, 50% defense right here. She's ceiling. She's stunning. She has scouter. She's giving herself key. Rainbow orb change. 70% chance to dodge. Exponential increasing defense every time she dodges. She recovers HP. Oh, and she's supporting as well. Uh, what more could we, what more could you do? Uh, hello? What they did was they took away all the damage, right? So she's not getting damage right here. The support buff she gives is not including herself, right? But it, it's, she doesn't need to. Her role, she is not helping by doing damage. If they gave her damage, they would not give her the scouter and the dodge and the support and the heal, and the exponential defense. It's like, by sacrificing attack, they gave her everything else. I love this. This is perfect design right here. Beautiful. I could not have done it better myself. If I would have been designing a character, something like this is probably what I'd come up with. The only problem is a lack of teams, right? It's like, if you, but I see people running her all the time without leader skill, right? Because it's like she she doesn't really need a leader skill so much. But um, there we go. So these are sort of like uh, what I think are the best designs. Let me look down here again. I talked about cooler. It's just it's just sort of boring. It's just defensive stacking added to him. Android eight is just damage reduction with Kid Goku. I mean Piccolo is kind of just like guarding and damage reduction. The Gammas, I guess, are kind of just like slightly weaker versions of pre-existing characters with a couple of things added on them, right? They do give a little support. They do have um, Gamma 2's got nullification, Gamma 1 has a counter. They could have made it on here, but I mean, over who? I, I mean, maybe the bottom three, certainly. I, I feel like a lot of people would be upset about Vegeta and Trunks because of the, the slot one thing, but again, I, it's not as bad as people think. Um, Piccolo right here. I just, I really like what they did for him as a sub-unit EZA to make him great for World Tournament. Um, I wanted to include Bardock, but I, I just feel like he's really not quite strong enough. The Scouter is really good. Um, but there certainly are, um, I, I don't know, I, I'm looking at it, like, are there other characters that I would sort of want on here? And I, I don't know, like, you know, this Carnival Goku needs to get hit and stuff like that, which can really be quite annoying uh, Fasha needs to get hit, and her guard is only for a short couple of turns. She's not getting defense on her super attack effect, right? Like, there's there's flaws on, on a lot of these characters, which is why I didn't go with that. So, uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, very obvious, I think, what makes, like, a strong design up here. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.